March is Minnesota Food Share Month and the Brooklyn Center Food Shelf is highlighting a problem it's experiencing this winter. There are empty shelves that seep for staples like rice, noodles and canned meat. The food shelf was hit hard during the government shutdown and donations are also down due to the cold snap. This month is so important to see because this is what carries us through those remaining winter months and into spring. It, we have a goal of over 250,000 pounds of food to raise this month and while that seems like an astronomical amount of food, really that's about six weeks of food for our food shelves. SEAP hopes to rebound during Food Share Month. Last year, it was fourth in the state for fundraising. Look for upcoming donation opportunities, including a Stuff the Truck event at the Brooklyn Park Hy-Vee on March 16th. A developer wants to build a 102-unit senior living complex on Harbor Lane in Plymouth. That's on the northwest corner of Highway 55 and Fernbrook Lane, right behind the Devonies. It would be four stories tall. The council got to hear from the architect to see how the building would fit in with the surrounding area. The council expressed some concerns that there wasn't enough space for snow storage. The council also hopes some units could be considered affordable. Well, what is it like to be a school bus driver, especially given all the recent snow and cold? Eric Nelson introduces us to one of them, a familiar face for those who follow new development in Plymouth. We got 12,000 kids in this district, and uh, most of them get to school by, uh, by school bus. For three years, Mark Anderson has been transporting precious cargo. You know, safety is, is what we do. As a bus driver in the YZ district, I pride myself on that. He is focused on getting kids to and from school in a non-eventful way. It's not about trying to be a hero, a friend, uh, cool, or anything like that. Um, it's, it's about getting in there safely. Being a bus driver in the bold north means dealing with ice, snow, and other weather conditions. Basically, I'd rather be in a bus like this uh, than sliding around in my car some days. Anderson says these yellow giants are built to handle most driving challenges. Fortunately, these buses are pretty fleet-footed. They've got duels in the back. They're very heavy, 26,000 pounds. They can handle the weather pretty well. CCX News recently went on a simulated ride with Anderson before one of his stops. Turns out to be about five hours a day. Bus driving fits perfectly into Anderson's day. He also chairs the Plymouth Planning Commission. I consider myself semi-retired and uh, it works well with my schedule. I have a shift in the morning, a shift uh, later in the afternoon. I have a break in the middle of the day. For Anderson, driving is more than a job. It's a chance for him to reflect on his Plymouth roots. His kids and grandkids all went to school in the YZ district. This is a place where they get to mingle, you might say, with their neighborhood. Whereas in school, they're in different ages, they're in different classes. Anderson also gets to see some of these youngsters grow up. The kindergartners will arrive just timid as can be, and you know they'll begin to express themselves. In Plymouth, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. First Student Bus Company is always looking for good bus drivers. They say they are currently hiring at $18 an hour with a $3,000 signing bonus. Brooklyn Park is starting a project to become more efficient and unlike a lot of endeavors, officials say there is no downside at all. I don't see any right now. Uh, right now it's just, you know, can we seamlessly convert the stuff we have right now over to this new system? And, you know, that's going to take some time. But if we do the time now and put in the time, it'll pay off. This machine looked familiar. The microfiche reader was once ubiquitous pretty much everywhere from libraries to local government. But its day has passed, and Brooklyn Park is moving to get rid of its microfiche records. The city stores records like construction permits on thousands of microfiche files, and soon those files will be digital. They're moving to a system called Laserfiche, and with that move, record searches will be easier, take less time, and might cost less than fees. They'll even be available online. The city hopes to complete the project by early next year. Students in New Hope have fresh perspective on how they view the world, from the civil rights movement to Native American culture to Pearl Harbor. Students at North Education Center showcased their history projects. Photojournalist Dustin Scholl showed us what they learned. The biggest reason why I love History Day is it 
provide students the opportunity to learn and grow at the same time having fun. I learned a lot like how independent or how good my country is and how we interact with people. I'm their history teacher, so I wanted to find history relevant and connecting to them. This is my poster on Ojibwe culture. I have my great grandmas up on here. They did some pretty cool, amazing stuff in their lives. Showing off uh, kind of their interests and their passions and looking really in depth at things that otherwise don't show up in, in textbooks or history books. A lot of non-natives think this is just like a costume that we just wear to wear but it's really not like we gotta bless it with sage, we have to make it handmade, we gotta put out tobacco, we gotta pray to our spirits and our ancestors. We wanted the students to see that there are multiple perspectives to every event. So to look at the same event through two different lenses, to see both the tragedy of it, but also what was learned from that experience. The tragedy is that we're losing our culture, we're losing ourselves, we're losing our people, we're losing our land and you know, we need to educate people. Our country was like taken over by British and then they came over and then they was using our people as a slavery. So um, we fought back and then we gained our independence. Those events really changed our history and changed the way that we see people and see each other. A panel of judges will select history projects to compete in a regional competition in mid-March. The winners of that compete at state in April. If you are a runner or walker, it's tough to find a sidewalk that's not covered in ice and snow, which is why people have been flocking to the Plymouth Fieldhouse, where people can walk or run indoors for free. It takes five and a quarter laps to equal a mile. Dome temperatures range from 30 to 55 degrees. You can check out the schedule on our website, c6media.org. The state wrestling tournament wraps up this weekend. On this week's Sports Jam show, we met Wyzetta state entrant, Kale Swenson. He was given a wrestling legend's name, so maybe it was destiny for Wyzetta sophomore, Kale Swenson, to become a star on the mat. We wanted an unusual name. We wanted something that was different. And Kale Sanderson was wrestling at Iowa State at the time, and we lived in South Dakota. And we were able to watch it on I think at the time, like public broadcasting covered the Iowa State matches. So we, um, you know, Kale, Kale this, Kale that. And my wife was like, I really like that name. And if you don't know much about wrestling, nobody knows. So, um, so that's where we got the name from. And when you, when you go to national tournaments now, there's a lot of little Kales. There's a lot of kids right around his age that are named that. Kale surpassed the 45 win mark for this season over the weekend at the Section 5-3A individual tournament and will make his second straight state appearance. I think I wrestled really well. I think my styles changed a little bit, a little bit meaner, uh, faster, stronger. Uh, I don't know, I think I, the three losses I've had were really close matches and I think uh, just, I think I'm a different wrestler and I would like to have had those matches back because it would have been pretty sweet being an undefeated wrestler, but uh, it's good to see what I needed to work on and improve on from those losses. He's beaten a lot of ranked kids, a lot of great, great matches. Um, his confidence is, is sky high, and um, we really we've had a fun year. It, it hasn't been a, it hasn't been a, um, too stressful yet. Um, I know the state tournament's gonna be really hard. He's got some buddies from other towns that are in his weight class. Kale and his dad, Eric, the Trojans head coach, get to spend a lot of time together. That's mostly a good thing. I think it's benefit uh, me a lot because he gets that one-on-one -on -one where he sees what I need to work on and then when I like go to Minnesota Elite and have workouts with private coaches, he's there to be able to like uh, um, say what I need to work on and also be able to push me when some other kids might be slacking a little bit, I can, I am always know I'm going to be pushed. The nervous feeling of it is, is tremendous. It's, it's, it can be overwhelming. Um, we were in the state tournament years ago. Um, there was, a, there was a, a kid I had in Florida and his, his, um, his name is Sean Landgraf and his dad is a police officer down there. And Sean was in the state finals and his dad came up to me before. His dad's a big guy and he's just like, oh, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying inside. And um, I just, I, I looked at him and I was like, hey, relax, we got this. And I, I mean, as a coach, I had no nervous feeling at all. There was just nothing. And I just said, we got this. And, and Sean ended up winning a state title and, and everything was good. And I didn't realize what that was until my son started wrestling. 
Kale's little brother Logan is also an accomplished wrestler as a seventh grader, although he's too small to wrestle at even the lightest high school weight class. His grade is really strong. Him, my brother Logan, and his practice partner Luke Coonan, they wrestle really hard together. They, they push each other, and I think when they're, when they're in high school, that we're going to be really tough because those two guys, they work really hard. They come in here and they just get right after it. They don't take time with their shoes or anything. They just got them on, come in, start wrestling. Cale Swenson was fourth at 106 pounds in his first state appearance last season. He wrestles year round and placed fourth at Greco Roman Nationals. He's rated number four at 120 pounds in 3A heading into state and definitely thinks he's a title contender. I definitely think I have a good shot. Uh, I think I'm, I work really hard. I get in two workouts a day. I'm driven. I eat right. I'm healthy. I do everything. And I just really want it. I want it bad. You know, he's a sophomore. Um, we still have junior year and senior year as well, and and um, and, and I think uh, I think if, if he keeps working and doing what he's doing, I I, I would hope that that is a, is in the future for him. We'll have a recap of the state tournament starting Monday on Sports Jam.